Jesus and the disciples come out of the temple. And we just hear that in this gospel. They come out of the temple after what we heard last week. After they heard about being aware of scribes who like to walk around in long robes and be noticed to be the center of attention. In the temple where they heard and saw this widow put in all that she had, everything she had to live on, and Jesus made a point about corruption and power. It's then that one of the disciples said, look, look at these huge buildings. Look at these incredible stones. Look at the grandeur. It seems like a perennial human instinct or problem to constantly think bigger is better. To say, look at how wonderful, if I just had that. If they've got a bigger one, it must be better. So we can say things like, look at that big house. Look at that large portfolio. Look at all their medals and trophies. Look at all the claims they have. Look at that huge walk-in closet with all their clothes and shoes. What glory. It's so easy to think bigger is better and to think then there must be glory associated with faith as well. Once again, we're forced to think about with whom or what is our ultimate faith. Where does our ultimate trust lie? Does it lie in our big houses? In our bank accounts? In our accomplishments? There is nothing wrong with any of those things. If our ultimate trust is found in them, we will be found empty. Jesus says our ultimate trust is in God. That's where we find our center, our hope, and what will sustain. So then the disciples start asking questions about how they can know. I don't know about you, but I always say I wish I had a crystal ball, right? If I just knew what was coming next, I could be prepared. But all of us know those things that have happened to us in life, nothing could have prepared us for good or bad. We face it. We find strength. We find celebration together. But nothing could have prepared us for that time in our life. So Jesus reminds them that there will be those who come along and say, to follow God is all about glory. It's all about prestige. It's all about gathering. It's all about bigger and more wonderful. They are leading you astray. He also reminds them that these signs, most of us in this room know that the earth was, or the world is going to come to an end at least, what, 5, 10, 15 times in our life? It was going to be on this date, 1942. It was going to be on this date, 1958. We have all these times where the signs are pointing. And what happens when we start looking at those signs as sure ways of knowing when the world's going to end, then all we're worried about is the world's going to end. All we can think about is that there's a time where this will be no more, and we forget that there is a now. We forget to look at the needs around us. I have friends that follow a faith that says, I don't have to take care of my body, I'm going to get a new one. I don't have to take care of the earth, I'm going to get a new one. It discounts the current. And Jesus used present tense over and over again when he talked about the kingdom breaking in now. Henry David Thoreau was once asked by his aunt, have you made peace with your God? He said, I've never quarreled with my God. But she pushed it and said, but aren't you concerned about the next world? To which he replied, one world at a time. We are called to be God's people right here and now. And there's incredible things on the earth. There are dolphins and sunsets. There's fresh sweet corn, symphonies, puppies, pumpkin pie, rock and roll, and there's hope. And there's things that aren't so great. There's also famine, there's war, there's violence, there's meanness, and there's bigotry. And Jesus acknowledges that and says, this is the world to which you have been called, and this is how you live in that world. With an ultimate trust in a God who will sustain you. A God who gives you all good gifts and will sustain you and give you wisdom in those times of darkness. But always acknowledging that darkness does not win. As a church, we remind one another in our singing, in our confessions, that we are loved and we are blessed. Already today we have sang a hymn of praise, and I think we have a second one from the choir. 
On Wednesday night, we will gather on the eve of Thanksgiving and we will show gratitude to God and to one another. We are people who know about love and gratitude and out of that, we share generosity 365 days a year. That's what stewardship means. Yes, it feels this weekend like it's a little bit of a business. We hand you this pledge card and ask for exact numbers. We add, give you a time and talent sheet and said check off who you are and what you can give to us. And it feels like a business. But the business of the church is being the mission of Christ in the world 365 days a year. What we acknowledge this weekend is for good order, it's good to have some numbers. For good order, it's nice to have a list to call if we need a cake baked or need someone to lead something. But 365 days a year, we celebrate these good gifts that we have. On a Monday, someone will drive a friend to a doctor's appointment. On a Tuesday, a mentor will show up at the school again, just like he or she did last Tuesday, and the Tuesday before that, and the Tuesday before that. On a Wednesday, someone will take a freezer meal to someone who wasn't sure how they were going to make supper that night. On Thursday, there's someone who will go out and buy something they noticed a need this weekend at church, and they just go out and buy it and drop it off. It wasn't on a list. There wasn't an email from the pastor saying, do I have a deal for you? Could you go get this? They just saw a need and took care of it. On Friday, someone will write a thank you, and someone will get real mail with a handwritten name that says, thank you for what you have done and who you are. On Saturday, someone came and got all set up for the potluck last night and the potluck today. Today, we will greet each other. We will say good morning, or we will share the peace, and we will speak each other's name. And in that moment, we remember when our name is spoken that we do not walk alone. 365 days a year, we are the stewards who take care of all God's good gifts. In Hebrews, we're reminded of our life together. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. Let us provoke one another to love and good deeds. So we provoke each other 365 days a year to care for the property that we've been entrusted with as we rake, as we mow, as we clean, as we buy equipment for the church. 365 days a year we provoke each other to feed the hungry, to take care of those in our community who need a home, to gather coins together so people can do their laundry. We speak up for those who do not have a voice. We provoke each other to gather together food for Christmas baskets. We provoke each other to serve a meal for logos. We provoke each other to worship with the men at St. Dismas. We provoke each other to help with the middle school right here in our own city. We provoke each other to gather coins and offering together in Sunday school so that we can give tuition for kids in Cameroon. We provoke each other to be involved in Nicaragua as we work for ways to use their resources and to raise crops. We provoke each other to dance every year in December as we celebrate light. We are those people of God who gather weekly and we usher and greet and write prayers and help serve communion at this table and at individuals' tables who cannot gather from this table with us. We sing, we play, we video record the sermon, we upload the sermon to YouTube, we deposit the offering. Every single day we live as people of God. So we are going to ask you to fill out a time and talent sheet and a pledge card, but it's just a small symbol of what it means to celebrate God's good gifts. This day we will gather around the communion table and we will gather around a potluck and let us approach together with a true heart full of assurance of faith that we are a loved and grateful people who are generous 365 days a year. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the huge things in our world, the Grand Canyon, the Great Whale, the massive elephants. We give you thanks for hummingbirds and a still small whisper that speaks our name. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all good gifts. And as we remember this weekend and the other 364 days this year, that you have called us, you have blessed us, we are loved, 
And out of that gratefulness, we turn to our neighbor and walk this journey together. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.